importing data into TATAM with TDI. We'll use this file, which contains information about machines and their operating systems. I'm going to read and parse this CSV file. Then I'm going to create an IDML import file, which can then be imported into TATAM. Now, this file does not contain column names, which is often the case. So I'm going to have to tell that, uh, set that up in the parser in TDI. But let's go there now. Let's get TDI, create a new config. This one I'm going to put in the TATAM subdirectory. And I'll call this load machines. Now I'm going to create an assembly line, which I'm going to call CSV2IDML. This is what we call a DLA, some sort of a process or system that creates IDML import files. Now typically, we would use the feed section as a loop to drive data into the flow. In this example, however, I'll be putting all the logic in the flow section. Here I'm going to open and close a discovery book. And to do that, I have function components designed for this purpose. And if I follow the instructions for setting up these components in TDI correctly, they show up here at the bottom. So I'm going to start with my, uh, to open the discovery book. Here we've got some fields we need to fill out. Let me just make this area larger. And these fields are then used, some of these fields are used then to create a random name for this IDML import file. This information is also used to classify where this import data came from inside TATAM. So you might want to put TDI for application. But I'll just put app 1.0 here. Directory name is C temp, and this folder has to exist because this is where this discovery book will be written. I'm going to call this my book, IBM app and that's all we have to do with this one now we need a, to close the book again another function component for this and we have to give it the same book name so now we have opening and closing of the book in between this what we want to do is loop through the CSV file so I'm going to add a loop, call this one for each CSV line, and then drag it in between my open and close function components. This is a connector loop by default. The, uh, the screen is not wide enough, so this button is hidden here. If I make this slightly smaller, then I get my button where I can select which connector to use. And here I'm going to select the have it reading from this file. Then I'll choose a parser, select the CSV parser, instruct it that we have commas, not semicolons in this file. And then I need to put in the, the field names. So here I could put in machine and operating system using the same separator as I've defined up here. Or I can put each field name on a separate line. Once that's done, I should be able to connect to that file and read and parse it. Now we can see the information coming through here. So let's just map these in. So they're available in the assembly line as well, and they'll, go, they'll be passed into the loop for each cycle that it does. And in each of these cycles, we want to add a configuration item for the machine. So let's add a connector because Configuration items are added using connectors. And these were also made available when I followed the setup instructions for these IDML components. Once again, at the bottom of the list, this is where I have my configuration item and relationship uh, connectors for adding. I'm going to call this add computer system. I already know what I'm going to add, but I'll show you how I figured that out. The TATAM developer team maintains this document, a number of examples, common examples of IDML files, showing you how to map. You can see here, here for example is an example of a Linux system. Going further on down, we have 
routers, and we have load balancers, and other types of equipment. So I'm going to just go to this page with the Linux system, and we're going to use this as a guideline, and just zoom up on this a little bit. So here, right here, is the node for a Linux unitary computer system. Then comes the node for the operating system, and then comes a couple of relationships between them. Each one of these nodes has an ID, which uniquely identifies it in this IDML file. And that ID is later used here and referred to for relationships. So let's go back to this one. And what we want to do is just add a computer system. And that is the sys computer system, as described in the Java docs there. And it's always prefixed with CDM colon. The book name is my book. And then we have to decide which properties to write. And we're going to need an ID. And I'm going to grab the machine, uh, this field here, and just rename that and make that our ID. Which other attributes we can write, if we take a look back in our example, we see that we have things like fully qualified uh, domain name. And this is, this is the sort of information that we're reading in right now. So let's write this field. We're going to write FQDN attribute. And that one we're going to map to machine as well. And finally, if I want to be able to update information in Tatum, every time I run this import, it's looking at the various properties, at the various fields that I'm delivering in the IDML import file. And it then uses naming rules and has a series of naming rules to say, OK, if I can find this attribute or these attributes, then that will be used to uniquely identify this object. If not, I go to this set. And these naming rules are found in the Java docs. So let's just add a signature a signature attribute or property to uniquely identify this uh, this computer system. So again, I'm going to use machine, drag it in, double click it, and we'll call that CDM signature. All of these three attributes are mapping from the same value. This is not uh, untypical. This, this is the sort of thing that you'll be doing as well. And these are the names that we'll be writing. So now I need to write the operating system as well. That's another connector. Go to the bottom, choose the configuration item connector, and we'll call that add OS. <clears throat> now, going back to our example again, here we have the installed on. So I'm going to just copy and paste this straight in the TDI. That'll be the name. The book name is my book again. And the name of this will be what we're reading in from the file but I need to rename this to OS name. And we'll also need an ID. Now, I'm going to reuse the machine. I'm going to switch to expression mapping. And then we're just going to append underscore OS. So that will uniquely identify this operating system, or this instance of this operating system, on this machine. So now we've added our two CIs. And the last step is to add the relationship installed on. Again, we add a connector under this loop, go to the bottom. This time, we choose the IDML relationship. And here, I'll say add installed on. Going back to our example, the type that we want to use here, this is the relationship name. So that's, the, that's the relationship type we want to use. Book name is, again, my book. And the source is, or the target is going to be the machine, so we can do that very simply. Just drag in machine, double click, call it target. And then we drag it in again. This time we call it source, and that's going to be the ID of the operating system, in which case we need to do the same thing we did here by going to expression mode and adding the underscore OS afterwards. And now we can test this. And that's all it takes to build a DLA with TDI.